بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد. The next verb we're going to discuss is صار which means to become. So we we did this in the last lesson. When Samai when Afalun Natasa kan wa khawatuha, and this is where we are right now currently in the book. <coughs> now صار what is صار? It means to will to become. What does it mean to become? To move from one state to another state, or to move from one hand to another hand. So صار means here to become. Now, meaning the ism became the khabar. Now, what can happen? It can mean one one item becomes another item. A change of state completely. Change of state, not state. Change of the essence. For example, sar al khamru, khal. It must be sar til khamru because khamar is muannas. So that needs to be changed in the book. Sar til khamru khallan. That's probably a mistake. So the khamar became vinegar. So sar til khamru khallan. The khamar became vinegar. So now the whole thing changed. Or, لِتَحَوَّلِ sifat, The sifa changed. صَارَ الْمُذْنِبُ مُتَّقِيًا So same person, but the sifa from muthnib became muttaqi. So there's a bit of a clarification, but nothing really rocket science in that. Acha. Next message we have here is, that kana asbaha adha amsa an dhalla an baata. All of these can have the meaning of sara, to change from one state to another. So kana can mean sara to become. Asbah can become mean become. So it has a, again you have to remember. I mean I may not have all the answers right now. I cannot answer every single question you raised regarding the Quran verse where asbah means sara. Why is it asbah? But just know this in your mind. You have the question. You can find the answer as you go along. Is that whenever you say this verb or this word means this, it doesn't mean totally and completely. The remains of the asal meaning will always be there. So if you have asbah means sara. Okay, it means it to become. But there must be a reason why the word asbaha is still used. Why not asara is used? You get it. Remnants of the word asbaha will remain. Uh, amsa. If amsa means to become, the meaning of amsa will remain. It wouldn't change completely. It will, ha- it will, it will miss sara, but the meaning will still remain in there. Okay? This is what we're saying here. إِذَا كَانَتْ كَلِمَةٌ بِمَعْنَى كَلِمَةٍ When one word is used in the meaning of another word, لا يزول أنها معناها الأصلي زوالا تعاما The asal meaning doesn't go away completely. Because there's no point. Just use any word, any meaning. If you say, oh, asbah means sara. Okay, it means sara, meaning the meaning of sara to become is also used here. But the subh ishtiqaq will have some kind of remnant, some kind of remain. It will not go away totally. Everybody understand this? Is something very important you need to keep in mind. Yes? Okay? Acha. <coughs> so for example, فَسَدِدَ الْمَلَائِكَةُ كُلُّ مَأْجِمَعُونَ The angels, all of them, <coughs> prostrate to, to the Adam. And then Muslims now إِلَّا Iblis, Iblis did not prostrate. Iblis refused to prostrate. Okay? Now we have this situation. And it says, وَكَانَ مِنَ الْكَافِرِينَ What do we have? وَكَانَ مِنَ الْكَافِرِينَ He was from the disbelievers. He was from the Disbelievers. And when we have this, some of us say Kana means here, Sara. He became. Now, the question will be if Kana means Sara, then why use Kana in the first place? If Kana means Sara, why use Kana in the first place? Kana has past tense meaning. So we can say here, Kana, it has implications of Sara to become. So he became from the Kafir. Why not use Sara in the first place? The meaning of Kana, which means Past tense. Not working for some reason. That is built in. The past tense meaning will remain. And what does it imply? If you look at the, in the tafsir, it probably came in the exam already. In the tafsir, what Hapa mentions that it was as though he, he became disbelievers. So one tafsir, he became disbelievers. As one tafsir. He became from the disbelievers, meaning he was pushing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he was doing his ibadah, then he became a kafir. He became disbeliever. But the word kana keeps its meaning of past tense to show this was already destined for him. This was eternal taqdeer. Like nothing changed here. It was what he was supposed to happen. And some have said the kana is an asal meaning. He was always from the kafirin. It was just a matter of show or a matter of apparent that he was doing sajda and ibadah for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But he was always from the disbelievers. So in here, the mufassin will differ. Some say kana is an haqiqi meaning, which means what? He was and always was a disbeliever. And some say kana means he became. So it's a majazi meaning. However, the word kana is used in sara to imply that even though he became, it was a taqdeer and his jibilla, his nature, to be from the disbelievers. Are you following? 
Yes. That's what we're saying here. So kana in this verse, according to one tafsir, is bima'na sara. But it shows that tahawul means tabi'atihi. It was from his nature, it was destined for him. That was his nature, it was his part of his nature from before. To be from the disbelievers. <coughs> Similarly, we have some other examples here. Where you have um, asbaha sara, uh, sorry, asbaha dhalla in the meaning of to become. Example, kuntum a'da'an, you were fa'allafa bayna qulubikum. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, reconciled between your hearts. He brought you together. Fa'asbahtum bi ni'matihi ikhwana. And you became what? Through his mercy, you became ikhwana, you became brothers. Fa'asbahtum bi ni'matihi ikhwana. Through his mercy, you became brothers. So we say here, fa'asbahtum bi ma'na sara. Now, I've not seen this anywhere, but to me, when I look at it, is why you raise the question, why asbaha, why not sara? So one thing that comes to mind is asbaha, what does subah mean? A fresh, subah has what? It has the implications of freshness, morning, a new light, a change from darkness to brightness. So, and so being enemies and having a, like, you, you live in, all, of, all of you living in Medina, Manawara, or, as it was known in Yathrib, you're living in Yathrib, there's war, there's bloodshed, there's enmity, there's drunkard, there's hatred. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends his Nabi, you all became brothers. So now it's like a new, a, a fresh dawn. I gave in English a metaphor, fresh dawn, a change from darkness to bright. So all of these meanings can be said, well, instead of saying, for sirtum ni'mati ikhwana, none of these meanings is, is encompassed. But I say, for asbahtum ni'matihi, you're saying asbaha, you became in a morning, oh, one morning they woke up and they were brothers. Meaning, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa worked on them and he then took bay'ah to them, allegiance to them and he reconciled between them and it's like a fresh dawn for Medina Munawwara it changed the whole, not only the whole city, it changed the face of the whole world so the word Asmaha has this connotation built into it Wallahu alam Another one إِذَا بُشِّرَ أَحَدُهُمْ بِمَا دَرَبَ الْرَحْمَانِ مَثَلًا When one of them is given glad tidings of مَا دَرَبَ الْرَحْمَانِ مَثَلًا of this, what is this? The very thing they strike for Allah as a parable. What do they say? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has daughters. That the malaika are the banatullah. So the very same thing they strike to Allah as a parable. That Allah has daughters. This very same thing when they are given uh, news of this. His face becomes darkened. And he's filled with anger. So we say sara. Now. ظَلَّ وَجْهُهُ مُسْوَدًّا Okay, why ظَلَّ? Some say here, this is one thing. لَا أَلَّ Perhaps ظَلَّ is what? What does ظَلَّ mean? ذِلْ What does ذِلْ mean? Shade, darkness. So ظَلَّ much is مُسْوَدَّ So مُسْوَدَّ means dark. ذِلْ means shade. So it says أَصْبَحَ وَجْهُ مُسْوَدًّا أَصْبَحَ has a meaning of like freshness, bright. ظَلَّ is ذِلْ, shade. So that possibly could be the meaning why ظَلَّ much is more مُسْوَدَّ Similarly, ظَلَّ is the longest part, longest fa'il. So it remains and it happens for like, it just remains non-stop the whole day, not coming to an end. So it's sara, it becomes dhalla, we have darkness, not as opposed to brightness in the morning. Or, uh, uh, and it could also have the meaning of, remains for a long period of time. So all of these kind of meanings are like intrinsic meanings understood from, which we get from dhalla, you want to get from sara. Wallahu alam. وَكَذَلِكَ فِي ظَلَّ إِمْتِدَادٌ لَيْسَ فِي sara. It's long a length, because of full day. Wallahu alam. Understood everybody following so far? Then we have the meaning of other, there are also other words that come in the meaning of sara. So irtadda is also meaning, it comes in the meaning of sara. For tadda basira. Someone say he became, meaning Sayyidina Yaqub alayhi salatu wasalam, he lost his eyesight. Is that right? Meaning his, his eyes became white, meaning he lost his eyesight because of his grief for Sayyidina. Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam, so fartadda basira. Then he became, when, when this whole story, when he threw, he sent his shirt back, he became basira, he became uh, bright again. He became, sorry, he became uh, visible, he could see again, not blind. So he says sar, he became basir. But obviously the word radda means to return back. So the faida and irtadda shows going back to a previous state. Fartadda, he became basir again. Yes, so if you say, if you say sara, it simply means he became. And irtadda means he became to a previous state. So that has an additional meaning which does not have in Sara. The word Ada has the same meaning as well in one tafsir. Let's, let's look at the one here. 
The people of Shu'aib they made a threat to him. So we will expel you, O Shu'aib, and we will expel those people who believe with you from our village. Unless you return into our millah. So now some say here that word Adam is Sara, i.e., you come into our millah. The reason is because Shu'aib was never in their millah, he was never kafir. So they say here that. They say here that means what? means I Sara, you come into our religion. But the easy answer is that Ada means Ada, like to go back. And they're speaking according to their own beliefs. Because what happens? Shaiw was not on their belief of kufar and shirk and idol worship, but he never spoke up against it before, before Nabuwa. So before Nabuwa, he never spoke up against idol worship, he never spoke up against it. So it just seemed that he was happy with it. So he, they didn't notice anything. And when he became a Nabi and he spoke up against it, it seemed as if now he's changed his religion. So they're speaking according to their own understanding that you have to come back to our religion as you were before. So he was never part of the religion, but they're expressing what they're understanding to be, to be Aud. So in that way, Aud means Aud. Adi Aud means Aud to return back. But some of us didn't have said, no, it really means Sara. This way of face looking at it. Fine. Istahala. Istahala also means what? To change state. And one example, إِنَّ الْعَدَاوَةَ تَسْتَحِيلُ مَوَدَّةً بِتَدَارُكِ الْحَفَوَاتِ بِالْحَسَنَاتِ The adawa, enmity, changes into love. How? You have enmity between two people. How does it, how does it make up? بِتَدَارُكِ الْحَفَوَاتِ By making up errors, mistakes by good things. When it's bad to you, you recompense them with good. That will, inshallah, uh, change the, the adawa into mawadda. Does everyone understand this? Any questions? Subhanallah wa bihamdi, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika wa nashadu wa la ilaha illa wa nashadu 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 wa